In this video, we're going to talk about how to send Slack notifications from Jenkins. Slack can be a great tool if you're wanting to keep people up to date about what's happening within your company. But sometimes that's not enough. What if you want to keep your team informed when something goes right or goes wrong inside of Jenkins? That's where the Slack plugin comes in. The Slack plugin allows you to send notifications to your team via the Slack API. Now today we are using the Slack plugin, but in the future you might want to write your own integration against the Slack API. By following some of the basic steps that are within this video, you can use those as a basis for you to create your own integration, maybe through a shared library, to Slack. Here's where we're starting today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.1. Attached to this controller, I have an agent, and this agent has a label of Linux. When this controller was installed, we installed it using install suggested plugins. Now everything that you see today, links to documentation, commands, and other types of items like that are going to be in a gist, and the link to that gist is down in the description of this video. Now the first thing that we're going to do today is we are going to install the Slack notification plugin. So let's go up to our dashboard, manage Jenkins, manage plugins, we'll go to available, and we will search for Slack. And the plugin that we want to install is Slack Notification. At the time of recording, which is August 31st, 2021, that version is 2.48. So we'll go ahead and check this box, download now and install after restart. And once we move from pending to ready, we will go ahead and do a restart. Okay, now that we're back, let's go ahead and log back in. And, Let's verify that the plugin was installed correctly. So we'll, again, we'll go to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, and go over to Installed, and type in Slack in the filter. And if we scroll down a little bit, we should see Slack Notification Plugin. Now, obviously, if we're gonna be integrating with Slack, we need to have an account with Slack. I have set up a workspace that I use personally and that's what I'm going to be integrating with today. Everything that we're going to be doing requires you to have administrative access to a workspace within Slack. If you do not have administrative access to Slack to create the things that you're getting ready to see, this isn't going to help you. This is where you're going to have to go work with your administrator of Slack to help you get these things set up. Now, where we're going to next is api.slack.com. This is where we set things up for our Slack workspace. So I am within my workspace. I have logged in as an administrator for my workspace. And if I click on your apps in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to see create an app. I do not have any applications installed into my workspace right now. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create an app. We're going to create it from scratch. And the app name, I'm just going to name it Jenkins. And I'm going to select a workspace, and that's my Planet Pope workspace. Let's click on Create App. Now we're on the basic information screen. What we want to do, and again, we're recording this on August 31st, 2021. So this may have changed by the time you're seeing this video, but the basics of this should be the same. If not, take a look at the documentation for the Slack plugin. And in fact, let me show you this. If you go to plugins.jenkins.io slash slack, it will take you to the Slack notification documentation. Everything that we're talking about today is at the bottom of this documentation. So if the setup changes for creating your app, this documentation will be updated at some point. So let's go back over to our Slack UI. Let's go ahead and click on permissions. And let's go ahead and scroll down to the scopes section. And we're going to be working in the bot token scope section. You also see a user token scope. We're not using that, we're using bot token scopes. So let's add an OAuth scope. And there's a long list here, but fortunately we can just start typing and auto completion will help us. So first one we want to do is chat colon write. We'll take that one. Let's add another one files write, 
We'll use that for when we're uploading files. We're going to add another one called chat write customize. We're going to do reactions write. We are going to do users read. And finally, users read, whoops, went too far, colon read email. So we've created six total scopes chat write, files write, chat write customize, reactions write, users read, and users read email. Next up, let's scroll up this page. We don't have to click away, just scroll right up. And we want to click on install to workspace. So let's click on install to workspace. And it's going to ask me, Jenkins is requesting permission to access the Planet Plope Slack workspace. It's going to give you the information of what will it be able to view and what will it be able to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on Allow. So when we come back to here, we see under the OAuth tokens for your workspace, instead of it saying Connect to Workspace, now we're seeing a token. I'm going to make a copy of this token. And I am going to stick it over in my notes. OK, so I've got my token. And for you eagle-eyed viewers, if you try to use this token, by the time you see this, it's already been destroyed. So you won't be able to use it. So now what I want to do is I want to go over into my Slack UI and see what's changed there. So I'm going to pull up Slack. And we can see down in the Apps section, I now see a Jenkins app. That's the app that we just created. But in order for our integrations to work correctly, we need to add this application to the channel or channels that we want to use. For the moment, we only want to add it to our general channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on Jenkins. I'm going to open App Details. And I'm going to click on Add this app to a channel. When I click on this, it's going to give me a selector, and I'm going to select General and click on Add. And if we close this up, you'll see now that Jenkins was added to General by Darren Pope. Now, in order for us to actually send our messages from our Jenkins controller over to Slack, we're going to need to set up a credential for that bot token. And then we are going to need to configure the Slack plugin to use that credential in order to access Slack. So let's get started with this. Let's head back over to our Jenkins controller. We're going to go to Dashboard, Manage Jenkins, Manage Credentials, and we're going to add a new credential that is of type secret text. The secret that we have is going to be the value of our bot user OAuth token. The ID that we're using is Slack bot token. You can name it whatever you want to, and I'm also adding that to the description. So the value for secret is the token that we created, which if we go back over and look at it, the value is this XOXB. So I've copied this, and that is the value that is within my secret. And then I gave it an ID and a description. Now let's go ahead and click on OK to save that credential. So that's been saved. Now let's go over and configure our Slack plugin. And the way you do that, Manage Jenkins, Configure System. And in my scenario, I need to scroll all the way to the bottom of Configure System. So down below all the email things, Slack is at the bottom. So these are setting up the default values. You can override each of these values within any message you send. But since I am making my scenario simple and I'm only going to be sending messages to my general channel, I'm going to set up all of the default values here. And then if I want to, I can override them later when I'm doing my actual step within a pipeline. So first off, I'm going to enter a workspace of Planet Pope, because that's the name of my workspace. I'm going to select my credential, which is the one we just created, Slack bot token. The default channel or member ID is going to be general. And I'm in including the pound symbol or hashtag, whatever you want to call it. So it's hashtag general. And then don't forget this. This checkbox is something that we need to check. So custom Slack app bot user, be sure to check that box. So up to this point, I've added in my workspace. I've selected a credential. 
I've set up my default channel. I could also have put in a member ID if I wanted, and I've checked the checkbox, custom Slack app bot user. Now there are other settings that we can set that are underneath advanced. We're not going to look at those today. Again, we're just getting set up. We're not getting into great advanced details, just how can we make this work simply? That's what we're doing. Let's go ahead and click on test connection. Now, as we clicked on test connection, you saw a little testing and now we see success. Let's go ahead and flip over back to Slack and see what we see. Now in general, we see Slack Jenkins plugin, you're all set up on and it gave me the link for my Jenkins controller. So now that we have confirmed that our basic integration from our Slack plugin to our Slack workspace is working, now let's go create a job so we can actually send a message from within a job over to our Slack workspace. So let's go ahead and flip back over to our controller. I'm going to go ahead and click on save here because I had forgotten to do that. So that's important, click on save. Let's click on a new item and we'll call this Slack-test pipeline and click OK. Let's go ahead and scroll down and we're just going to create the pipeline inside of here. We're not going to pull it in from a Git repository. So this pipeline will be over in the gist. So I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to copy this, put it in over here so we can see it. And we're just saying a single step, Slack send message, test message. Now you might be saying to yourself, okay, how did I know to use Slack send? So let me show you a couple different ways that you can figure this out. First off, you could look at the documentation for the Slack plugin. We saw it a little bit earlier. You'll see some examples here of how to use Slack send. Also, we can go into the actual Jenkins documentation and take a look at the Slack notification plugin steps reference. And we can see that there's actually a handful of different steps that are available through this plugin one of which is Slack Send. And if you take a look at Slack Send, you will see all of the different parameters that you can pass to Slack Send. But finally, let's just go back into our pipeline and click on Pipeline Syntax. Now, understanding that Slack Send exists is a, probably a helper here because I can click here, let's go down to Slack Send, and then from here, I can build out whatever I want. So in this case, I wanted to just send a message. I'm gonna say test message and click on Generate Pipeline Script. And then I could just copy and paste this and put it into my step. Now, to keep it simple, let's go ahead and click on Save to begin with and click on Build Now. As we see this run, let's take a look at the output. What we're going to see here is Slack Send Pipeline Step Running and the values are, and it prints out all the different values. Now you can notice here that the team domain is Planet Pope, the channel is general. This is being pulled in from our Slack configuration defaults. You can also see here that bot user is set to true, which is a default. Our token credentials, again, that comes in from the default. So since this job ran successfully, let's go over and take a look at it inside of Slack. And what we see here is now we see test message. So that's the step going back to our job configuration. Here we go. We can see that we sent a message, test message. But if we take a look back at Slack, and we can see that it's just test message, and there's this indicator here, and it's just gray. Well, what would happen if I actually wanted to change this to green to match this because it was successful? Well, we have a couple of different options. If you think back to what the documentation says about how to set colors, we'll click on advanced here, we can see color. We'll click on help, it's an optional value that can be one of good, warning, or danger. So it's not green, red, yellow, not that. You can say good, warning, or danger, or you can use any hex color. And you would specify it with the pound symbol or hashtag and the hex code to go along with the color. So for my example, I want to go ahead and just say good because good is going to be what I would expect with green. So let's go ahead and click on generate pipeline script. I'm gonna copy this. Let's go back over to our job configuration, pop that in right there to where it says color good message test message. Let's click on save and then click on build now. We'll see build number two start up and finish. 
It was successful. Let's go ahead and go back over and take a look at Slack. And now we can see that we have test message just like we did before, but now our color is green. So why would you want to send notifications from Jenkins to Slack? Let me name off just one good reason. People are probably spending more time in Slack than they are in their email. And if you'd only configure Jenkins to send notifications via email, and people aren't seeing the notifications there, then you're gonna have a longer time to resolve any issues that that notification was telling people about. If people are spending time in Slack, the chances of them seeing those notifications are probably higher, which means that you will probably get a quicker turnaround on any issues that need to be resolved. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.